Hello gang, first of all, I hope that you've all had a good week. I hope that you are ready for another dose of true crime for your Sunday. Let's go. This week, 16 years ago in 2004, in Liverpool, England, an 18 year old boy bludgeoned and stabbed his parents to death using a claw hammer and a carving knife, and then went on a luxury holiday across the USA with his girlfriend. It took six weeks for the bodies of his parents to be discovered. And today I'm gonna to try and explain what happened and equally importantly, why Brian Blackwell killed the very people who loved him above everything else. Welcome to the anniversary. Brian Blackwell was born in 1986. His parents were a little bit older in their 40s when he was born. They'd been trying for years to have a baby and after a complicated pregnancy and having trouble conceiving, they finally got their dream with a baby boy. They did push him super hard to do well in school and to excel in his classes. From everything that I've read and watched and listened to, Brian was a very, very smart kid. He aced all of his exams. He went to a public school, which in the UK, that means he went to a private school. And his parents were really strict on him. They put a lot of pressure and they were determined that he would do well. They picked his friends, they picked his extracurricular activities. They had a plan for their son and they were determined that he would go down the right path. While I do understand that a lot of parents do put undue pressure on their children, I'm Nigerian. The pressure that me, my siblings, the rest of the UK Nigerians felt growing up, I feel like might have been a little bit more. However, I wasn't there, so. I wanna tell you a little bit about Brian the boy and what he was like as a kid. He was a liar. One thing that was very clear is that Brian lived in a fantasy world. He played tennis at his local club and he told everyone that he was a pro. He told everyone that he was sponsored by Nike, that he was getting big checks, that he was playing with Roger Federer, going to competitions all over the world. He had a girlfriend called Amal. He bought her a car. He bought her fancy, expensive jewelry. And all of this, of course, came at a cost. Brian was 16, 17, 18. He didn't have the means to buy this stuff. So he stole from his parents. He got credit cards in his parents' names. He got loans in his parents' names. He was living this crazy, fast-paced life. And of course, you're not gonna be able to be using your dad's credit card to whisk your girlfriend away or to buy her a brand new car when she's 17 without your parents eventually finding out. Even if his parents were millionaires, which they weren't, they were well off and they definitely had money. But this guy, got 20 credit cards in his dad's name. When his parents did find out, it actually didn't stop him. Uh, his mum went to the bank and canceled the loan applications that he had got in her name and he just redid them at a different bank. In the lead up to his parents' murder in the summer of 2004, his lies, his fantasy life was spinning out of control. He would make notes on the fibs that he would tell people so that he would remember them for later. Because you know, there's that saying that to be a good liar, you have to have a good memory. So he was trying to ensure that he remembered it was Roger Federer that he beat at a tennis tournament that he told his girlfriend. He remembered that it was Nike and Adidas that he was being sponsored by. It all came to a head on Sunday, the 25th of July, 2004. Brian had booked a holiday for himself and his girlfriend. The flights that he booked cost between four and five thousand pounds and his mum and dad had enough. Now, we don't know exactly what happened next because the only person who is alive to tell the tale is Brian. And for obvious reasons, we can't take his word as gospel, but this is what the police have managed to piece together. And this is what they believe happened. An argument broke out between Brian Blackwell and his 71 year old father. He hit him over the head with a claw hammer and stabbed him 30 times with a 10 inch carving knife. He then knocked his 61 year old mother unconscious and stabbed her in the head and chest around 20 times. And then there was a taxi waiting for him outside because they were going on the holiday that day. There are a few details that make this case even more disturbing than it already is. And one of them is that the taxi driver said, Brian got into the car, then he hopped out because he said he forgot to say goodbye to his parents. He had just killed them. 
the attack was horrific. It was brutal and it was so violent. And Brian simply left his house, took his girlfriend on holiday, flew out, spent money staying in expensive hotels and splashing out. He even stayed in the presidential suite at the Park Plaza Hotel in New York. They traveled in limousines, they ate lobster and they had champagne, champagne, no expense was spared. They went on to San Francisco, to Miami, to Barbados. Money was no object. Brian's girlfriend, Amal, had no idea. She had no clue what he had just done. It takes a certain type of person to be able to kill their parents and go on holiday and act as if nothing happened. He used his dead parents' credit cards to pay for the £30,000 holiday he took his girlfriend on. In the documentary that I watched, and I'll link it in the description for you, it's a four-parter, there is video footage of him and his girl in the hotel, they're giggling, they're laughing, they're on a vacation, they are in restaurants, they're at the beach, they're on boats, they are living their best lives, and his parents' bodies were rotting in his family home. When they did get home, surprisingly, there was no police activity around the house. Nobody had realised that his parents were dead. He told his girlfriend that he didn't have a key to get in and his parents were on holiday in Spain. So she let him stay at her house. He went back to the house over the course of a couple of weeks, back to the place where his parents' bodies were decaying. He picked up post. He nicked some wine from his dad's collection to give to his girlfriend's mum. He played tennis against the back wall. He collected some family photos, all while the bodies of his parents were just laying there and it took six weeks until a neighbor thinking that they were on holiday went to post their mail through the letterbox and when he opened the letterbox that's when the smell hit him the bodies were so decomposed that the police initially thought that they had been shot they found brian chilling at his girlfriend's house of course and he was arrested immediately another thing about this case that makes it even more chilling was he wasn't initially seen as a suspect and then he goes to one of the police officers is it cold in prison? And he was like, boy, lock that guy up, throw away the key. We've got ourselves a lunatic. After two days of questioning, Brian Blackwell's story began to change. At first, he said he wasn't in the country. He said he had no idea what happened, but then he confessed to the killings. He claimed self-defense. According to him, he was holding a claw hammer and he was putting up some pictures in his room and his father stood up to hit him. But the investigators had already learned that Brian's dad was struck on the back of his head while he was sitting down. That's not self-defense. I've spoken a lot in this case about the small details being the reason that I find this one so chilling, but here's another one for you. A few weeks after Brian murdered his parents, it was A-level results day in August. Their bodies hadn't been discovered yet, but he went to his school to pick up his envelope to get his results. He spoke to a teacher who was there and told the teacher that he was angry at his mum and dad for not making the effort to come with him to get his results when they were decomposing in the very house that he had murdered them in. During the trial, the double murder charge was dropped after he pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. This was after experts had diagnosed him with narcissistic personality disorder. And a brief explanation for you, Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD, is a personality disorder which is characterised by a long-term pattern of exaggerated feelings of importance. I've put a link in the description for a better explanation of what that is. Brian Blackwell was sentenced to life in prison on the 29th of June 2005, just shy of a year after he murdered his parents. Theoretically, he would have been eligible for parole about five years after his sentencing if a psychiatrist deemed that he was fit for release. But the judge stated that present evidence suggests that that conclusion is unlikely to ever be reached. And Brian will probably spend a lot longer in prison. And there you have it, the story of Brian Blackwell, the 18-year-old boy who killed his parents this week, 16 years ago.